Hello children, welcome to my class. Children, in my last video, I have started a new chapter from the book Footprints Without Fit, Supplementary Reader in English for Class 10. And the name of the chapter is A Triumph of Surgery by James Herriot. Children, in my last class, I had given you the theme of the story, introduction, and summary of the story. Today, I will be reading the chapter, and I will give you paragraph-wise explanation. Let's begin the first paragraph. I was really worried about Tricky this time. I had pulled up my car when I saw him in the street with his mistress, and I was shocked at his appearance. He had become hugely fat, like a blotted sausage with a leg at each corner. His eyes, bloodshot and rheumy, stared straight ahead, and his tongue lolled from his jaws. Mrs. Pumphrey hastened to explain. He was so listless. Mr. Harriet, he seemed to have no energy. I thought he must be suffering from malnutrition. So I have been giving him some little extras between meals to build him up. Some malt and cod liver oil and bowl of horlicks at night to make him sleep nothing much, really. Let's see the explanation of the paragraph. The story begins with the narrator, Dr. Harriet, saying that he was worried about a pet called Tricky. He meets Mrs. Pumphrey on the road when he was driving as Mrs. Pumphrey was out with her pet Tricky for a walk. Dr. Harriet was shocked to see Tricky because he looks like a blotted sausage. He was excessively fat. He had blood red and rheumy eyes and was lacking energy. His tongue lolled from his jaws. Mrs. Plumphy said that she thought that Tricky was malnourished because he did not have any energy and excitement. She told him that she used to give him malt, cod liver oil, and a bowl of horlicks at night. Apart from this, regular meals so that he could sleep at night. Let's see the next part. And did you cut down on those sweet things as I told you? Oh, I did for a bit, but he seemed to be so weak I had to relent. He does love cream cakes and chocolates, so I can't bear to refuse him. I looked down again at the little dog. That was the trouble. Tricky's only fault was greed. He had never been known to refuse food. He would tackle a meal at any hour of the day or night. And I wondered about all the things Mrs. Pumphrey hadn't mentioned. Are you giving him plenty of exercise? Well, he has his little walks with me, as you can see, but Hodge King, the gardener, has been down with lumbago, so there has been no ring throwing lately. See the explanation. Dr. Harriet asked if Mrs. Pamphrey had stopped giving him sweets as per his advice. In reply, she said that even though she had stopped for a while, but she continued again as she couldn't be so harsh on the poor dog, pet dog as she thought that the dog was getting weaker. So she was unable to refuse him cake and chocolates as those were his favorite things. Then the narrator understood Tricky's problem. The dog was very greedy and could eat at any time of the day. He did not know how to say no to food when his stomach was full. He asked Mrs. Pumphrey whether Tricky is doing his exercise. She said that she took him for a walk but ring exercises weren't being done as the gardener who was supposed to play with Tricky was absent due to neck pain. Let's see the paragraph. I, that is Dr. Harriet, tried to sound severe. Now I really mean this. If you don't cut his foot down and give him more exercise, he is going to be really ill. You must harden your heart and keep him on a very strict diet. Mrs. Plumphe wrung her hands. Oh, 
I will, Mr. Harriet. I'm sure you are right, but it is so difficult, so very difficult. She set off, head down, along the road, as if determined to put the new regime into practice immediately. I watched their progress with growing concern. Tiki was tottering along in his little tweed coat. He had a whole wardrobe of these coats for the cold weather and a raincoat for the wet days. He struggled on, drooping in his harness. I thought it wouldn't be long before I heard from Mrs. Pumphrey. Let's see the explanation. Dr. Harriet advised Mrs. Pumphrey sternly that if Tricky's eating habit is not controlled and increased his exercises, he would soon fall ill. Mrs. Plumphe accepted that although she knew that Mr. Harriet was right, but it was too difficult for her to refuse him for anything. She loves Tricky very, very dearly. Mr. Harriet was watching them go and looking at Tricky walking unsteadily. The narrator was also looking at the tweed coat that Tricky was wearing. He had a wardrobe full of these coats and also raincoat for the rainy days. Mrs. Pumphrey was a rich lady as she had a lot of money to spend on her pet dog, her love, Tricky. Let's do the next part. The expected call came within a few days. Mrs. Pumphrey was distraught. Tricky would eat nothing, refused even his favorite dishes, and besides, he had bouts of vomiting. He spent all his time lying on a rug, panting, didn't want to go for walks, didn't want to do anything. I had made my plans in advance. The only way was to get Tricky out of the house for a period. I suggested that he be hospitalized for about a fortnight to be kept under observation. The poor lady almost swooned. She was sure he would pine and die if he did not see her every day. But I took a firm line. Tricky was very ill, and this was the only way to save him. In fact, I thought it best to take him without delay, and followed by Mrs. Pumphrey's wailing, I marched out to the car, carrying the little dog wrapped in a blanket. Let's see the explanation of this part. Dr. Harriet knew very well that very soon he would get a call from Mrs. Pumphrey about Tricky's falling sick, and he was very true to his intuition as he got the call after a few days. Mrs. Pumphrey was very distressed as Tricky wasn't eating anything, not even his favorite dishes, and was vomiting frequently. He didn't even want to do anything. The doctor came with his plan to take Tricky away to the hospital immediately as he knew that that was the only way to save Tricky as he suggested to Mrs. Pumphrey that it would be good to take Tricky hospitalized and keep him under observation for 15 days. This made Mrs. Pumphrey nearly fainted as she thought that Tricky would die if he could not see her even for a single day. But the doctor assured her of Tricky's speedy recovery and even though Mrs. Pumphrey was wailing because she did not want her dog to go away from her, he took the dog, wrapped it in a blanket and put him in the car. Let's do the next part of the story. The entire staff was roused and maid rushed in and out, bringing his bed day, his night bed, favorite cushions, toys and rubber rings, breakfast bowl, lunch bowl, supper bowl. Realizing that my car would never hold all the stuff, I started to drive away. 
As I moved off, Mrs. Plumfe, with a despairing cry, threw an armful of the little coats through the window. I looked in the mirror before I turned the corner of the drive. Everybody was in tears. Out on the road, I glanced down at the pathetic little animal gasping on the seat by my side. I patted the head and Ricky made a brave effort to wake his tail. Poor old lad, I said. You haven't a kick in you, but I think I know a cure for you. Let's see the explanation. All the servants and maids were woken up to get out of all Tricky's stuff. Dr. Harriet was surprised to see Tricky's stuffs, which included things like his day bed, night bed, favorite cushions, toys, rubber rings, breakfast bowl, lunch bowl, and his snack bowl, etc., etc. Knowing that so much stuff was not possible to fit in his small car, he started rushing things. While the doctor was rushing towards his car, Mrs. Frumpy threw a little coats that Tricky used to wear. While he was rushing his car on the turn, he saw through the rear mirror that everyone was crying. He patted the little helpless animal and he tried to respond by wagging his tail. Dr. Harriet told Tricky that he knew that he surely knew to cure him better. Let's do the next part. At the surgery, the household dog surged round me. Tricky looked down at the noisy pack with dull eyes and uh, when put down, lay motionless on the carpet. The other dogs, after sniffing round him for a few seconds, decided he was an uninteresting object and ignored him. I made up a bed for him in a warm, loose box next to the one where the other dogs slept. For two days, I kept an eye on him, giving him no food but plenty of water. At the end of the second day, he started to show some interest in his surroundings, and on the third, he began to whimper when he heard the dogs in the yard. When I opened the door, Tricky trotted out and was immediately engulfed by Joe, the greyhound, and his friends. After rolling him over and thoroughly inspecting him, the dogs moved off down the garden, and Tricky followed them, rolling slightly with his surplus fat. Later that day, I was present at feeding time. I watched while Tristan slopped the food into the bowls. There was the usual headlong rush followed by the sounds of high-speed eating. Every dog knew that if he fell behind the others, he was liable to have some competition for the last part of his meal. Let's see the explanation. They reached the hospital. All the other dogs in the surgery gathered around the doctor. Tricky looked at them. When the doctor put him down on the carpet, he couldn't even move. The other dog sniffed and finding him an uninteresting object and ignored and left him. The doctor, with the help of his partner, made a bed for Tricky in a warm box along with the other dogs. For first two days, Tricky was kept just on water. On the second day, he started showing interest and looking at the place around him. On the third day, he started making noise to let the people in the hospital know that he too wanted to go out with the other dogs. When the doctor opened the door, Tricky quickly came out and was surrounded by Joe, a greyhound, and his friends. After snipping him for a moment, all of them left for the garden where Tricky followed them. That evening, the doctor was present at the dinner time when Tristan was slopping the food on the bowl. 
all the dogs were eating with great speed because they knew that if they did not finish quickly then he would have to compete with other dogs to get his last part of his meal okay children that Uh, was the explanation of all the six paragraphs that i have done and for the next part of the story i'll explain you in my next video till then stay good